How's it going you guys, Damocles here, and today we're going to be testing out whether or not Floatstone is actually hot garbage. I know most of you are probably like flipping out at the title, flipping out at the, the thumbnail, flipping out at my first statement because you're like, Floatstone's amazing. But is it though? Is it? I haven't been running it in most of my like master builds recently because I think that it's actually not worth using that much. And we're gonna try and just get to the bottom of it and really explain why in this video. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, Floatstone, I got mine at level 30, you don't have to have yours at level 30. Um, increase the movement speed by 20% when the Pokemon's not in combat, it gives you 24 attack and 120 movement speed, just base, unconditionally, okay? And so the first thing that we're gonna test out is what is out of combat, okay? When a Pokemon is not in combat, how long does it actually take for you to get into that state where Floatstone is activated. Okay, now um, most, uh, there's like websites and stuff that have already, you know, have already like done testing and stuff on this, but you guys know how I do. I like to make sure that I know for myself. I don't like to just go off of other people's opinions. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test it with Assault Vest. Uh, so Assault Vest gives you a shield when you are uh, out of combat. And I'm basically gonna go get myself slapped by Wigglypuff uh, Wiggly Tough, sorry, and um, then we're going to see visually how long it takes for me to get that shield back up, and that's going to tell us how long it takes for you to actually get out of combat, okay? So, again, Assault Vest makes it so you get a shield when you're out of combat. Wiggly Tough does special attack damage, so she's going to slap me, knock off the shield, and then we're going to get out of combat and see... How long it actually takes so let's go and do that and the reason why this is important is because a huge part of floatstone's uh, usefulness comes from that passive movement speed ability so if it takes a very long time for that passive movement speed to actually kick in then it significantly reduces how useful floatstone is do you get what i'm saying um, because otherwise you're just going we're basically just looking at the base stats of floatstone and the base stats of floatstone are not anything crazy all right, so let's just go and get slapped here. I'm gonna wait until uh, 9.20 before I start running. Okay, let's go. So we're just gonna look at the clock here, see when it comes back up. Boom, okay, so it looks like about eight seconds. Eight seconds from going in combat when we last got hit to out of combat, which lines up with what most sites have for how long that actually takes. Um, and so let's go and with that knowledge that we've 100% confirmed so far, um, we're gonna go and test Floatstone itself. Let's go and see how long from a practical point of view it takes for that movement speed to kick in. Is it worth actually using? Is that movement speed going to be helpful? So um, from that, we base, from our first test, we basically determined eight seconds to get out of combat. So if, you are rotating between top and bottom lane, and it takes you eight seconds to get between those lanes. Sorry for hitting the mic. Uh, if it takes you eight seconds to get in between those lanes, then how useful is Floatstone really? Okay, so let's go slap on Floatstone. Again, 20% increased movement speed when out of combat, 120 base, 24 attack. That's at level 30. It's probably a little bit less movement speed um, if, you're at, if you're having a level 20 Floatstone. All right, um, actually, no, let's do it. Let's do it with no items first, okay? I'm gonna go and we're just gonna try like just a, a normal jungle pathing, okay? Stay with me here, stay with me. All right, so we'll try from top lane to bottom lane and just see how long it takes to tra traverse from one lane to the other without getting hit by anything. Um, I mean, we're not using floatstone in this instance, so it doesn't matter if we really get hit by anything because we're not you know, the combat's not going to change anything, but it'll just be a good control to see how much of an impact does Floatstone really have. Okay, so um, the first test we will run is just how long does it take? Hmm, how should we do this? All right, let's do let's do a couple tests. Okay, so okay, go away, Corefish. Come on. All right, so the first one is just a normal jungle gank route okay let me go and just hit level two here so we have some consistency okay so i'm hitting this core fish or maybe i'm not hitting this core fish and now i want to run to lane from right here so uh we're at 19 
We go to lane. We're running down here. You know, to this core fish, we're at 12. So what is that? Like six seconds or so, seven seconds or so. Okay. Um, just keep that in your head. You guys can watch the timer at the top of the screen. Um, and then to go from just top lane to bottom lane, I'm going to stand on this line and I'm just going to go straight down. Okay. I'm going to wait for the 850 mark. Okay. And we're just going to run down here. See how long it takes. Remember, out of combat takes eight seconds. So, boom, we're in the lane and it's 838. So about 12 seconds to go from top lane, from like the very bottom of top lane to the very top of bottom lane, 12 seconds. So what that means is if you have floatstone on, whatever bonuses you're getting from floatstone, if you were to get in combat or if you were in combat and you were moving from that point to another point, you basically only get four seconds of floatstone movement speed before you get into combat again. Is that worth it to you guys? Do you think that makes floatstone a good item? Okay, so, we, so we've done that. We know no floatstone takes us about 12 seconds to get from top to bottom. And what was it like six seconds from the corp fish to like the other corp fish. So now let's go and leave the battle. I'm going to toss on the level 30 float stone. We're going to see what happens with the passive activated, not getting hit by anything. And then the actual more realistic scenario, which is you hit something and then you try and rotate, right? Like say from dreadnought to, uh, to top lane or from top lane ganking to bottom lane. Already, I kind of think that Floatstone is not that great. Let me know if I've changed your opinions already just, you know, in the past uh, couple minutes. Let me know because I know a lot of people preach this item and I really love this item in the beta because uh, it was phenomenal. But I think that if we're determining that the passive is not that great, then you have to look at the actual base stats and the base stats are not that good either. So um, first, let's just go. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go toss on floatstone and we'll run um, we'll run similar tests to that last one, okay? So um, we'll try the corp fish for, to corp fish because that's kind of just simulating a ganking route. Um, and you guys can let me, well, I mean, I can see obviously the timer, but you guys let me know if I miss anything because I'm focusing on doing the video and this. Um, but let's go and do that real quick. Uh, I'm just gonna kill this APOM real quick so I can get this level up. Actually, I could just skip to one level, huh, with the practice tool, but whatever. Okay, so let's make sure we're out of combat. That's the problem is, let's see. We know it takes a little while, don't we? Okay. So now let's get hit, and at 9.30, we'll go. All right, we're gonna run over here. 9.30, and we got there at 9.23, 9.24. So not that different from when we didn't have a float stone. Why? Because it takes us eight seconds of out of combat, eight seconds of not getting hit and not, and not hitting something else to take us out of combat, which in a normal ganking route, not that long period of time. So basically, the only thing that we're getting when we're moving like that is the flat um movement speed increase which is in the grand scheme of movement speed is not that massive okay it might be massive in certain circumstances like chasing down an opponent maybe that little bit of extra movement speed will help you but we're not we're missing out on a big chunk which is the 20 percent, right so now from a similar position that we were uh before with the other one i'm going to try not to get hit by this stupid core fish we'll wait for 8 30 and we'll run to bottom lane this is with the passive so 8 30 and here we go okay so we're going all the way down here. Boom. Okay, so we get there. What would you say? I would say that was probably about 10 seconds. Okay, we're at 10 seconds. If we want to be generous, we could say nine seconds. All right, that's with the base movement speed from Floatstone and the passive 20% increase from Floatstone, level 30. Uh, or the passive from level 20, you get the point. So it shaves off two seconds in perfect ideal scenarios in a vacuum where nobody's hitting you and you're not doing any jungle creeps and you didn't just come from ganking a lane. Okay, so float stone is shaving off two seconds of travel time there in that specific scenario. All right, now if we go and we do it from a more realistic scenario, we just came from a gank. Okay, 740. 
Might have moved a little early there, but it's okay. Floatstone just kicked in now after we passed that core fish. And boom, we're here. You see what I'm saying? That was about 11 to 12 seconds, in my opinion. Which is the same as not having um, a float stone at all, practically, right? The difference is this much. So, in my opinion, it's kind of concluding, hey, the passive, kind of useless, right? Like, how, how often in the game are you actually running around and not hitting anything? You're not farming a jungle camp. You go and farm any jungle camp, boom, you're back to base movement speed for a while, like for a while, for a significant amount of time. I mean, it just kicked in there. Like you traverse a large amount of map without having that base move, without having that passive movement speed. So, okay, in my opinion, we determined pa passive, not good. It's almost, almost worthless if you're playing in a very active game right? Rotationally, it's not that great because you're not going to just be doing nothing in lane and then rotate. You're going to be fighting over uh, an Apom, a Vespa Queen, a Dreadnought, and then you're going to rotate. And maybe even if you're not fighting, you go and you hit this Dreadnought and then you run up through a Vespa Queen, Vespa Queen taps you and boom, your passive's gone. So then we have to look at the base stats. The base stats, what is it? 24 attack? 24 attack and 120 base movement speed? Is that worth it? Is that worth it? using an entire item slot? Is that worth investing all of your, you know, potentially free to play item enhancers on Floatstone? I don't think so, guys. I don't think so. I know people love this item and I used to love this item a lot too, but I really want to know what, what your, what your thoughts are now that you've seen, you know, obviously our tests could be better, you know, but I think with how accurate our tests were, it's pretty helpful in determining that maybe Floatstone is not what you should be focusing on. 24 attack is not that great. Movement speed is nice, but at that amount of movement speed, it's not a significant enough bump that's going to make a massive difference in your rotations, as we saw. The only thing I could really see it making a potential difference in is if you have if the enemy that you're chasing after doesn't have floatstone and you have floatstone and you're in an extended chase, like a real extended chase, that one, two, three, four percent movement speed increase could help you catch them in certain scenarios. But out, but is that worth dedicating an entire item and a bunch of item enhancers to? I don't think so. I don't think so. Just as a comparison, just assuming that you agree with me and that the passive is not good. 24 attack. Okay, let's look at attack weight. Attack weight at level 20, in comparison to the level 30 float stone, gives you plus 12 attack, which is half. But if you score once, you're already at 24 attack. If you score the maximum of six times, what is that? 72 additional attack plus the 12. And that's a level 30 float stone. So if we bump this up, I'm guessing attack weight probably caps out, the base stat caps out at like 24 attack. So you're looking at like an additional, what, like a hundred attack from using attack weight instead? Or, you know, what I've been using instead of float zone in a lot of my builds is using energy amplifier or I've been using buddy barrier uh, because of how good they are. And I'll go into that in my items tier list, but you, but part of these items and the big part of these items is their passives. And if you're not getting any use of their passives, then the base stats need to be absolutely phenomenal. And I don't think that Floatstone is. Thank you, Another Lops, for the follow. I appreciate it, Broski. And um, I'm really curious what you guys think. Do you guys like this test? Do you like these kind of videos? Do you want to see more? You want to see my held items tier list? What do you guys want to see next? I'm trying to follow your suggestions. I know uh, some people want to see my champ gameplay. Um, I have a bunch of videos coming up the pipeline uh, in regards to like the post patch builds for like guys like Talonflame and Charizard. I've been testing them out in some standard games and uh, I've also got some updated tier lists. I've got some held items tier lists. I wanted to talk about um, uh, the other items as well, the battle items like eject button, stuff like that, as well as just some general gameplay guides. You guys let me know what you think. Let me, uh, let me know what you want to see next and let me know if you agree with my observation. 
that's going to be it for me, guys. Damocles out.